There is a new open source AI model that everyone seems to be talking about these days. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to use it and how to generate the thumbnail of this image with that particular model. The name of the model is Z or Z image and it's developed by Alibaba. As of now, we only have the turbo model, which is quite interesting because it might very well be a stable diffusion XL competitor. But I will kind of walk you through how to get started with it, even if you've never used AI before. But also if you have used AI before or if you know how to use ConfUI and how to download stuff, I will have all the time codes in the description as well as in the video so that you can just skip ahead and see how this works. So before we get started, I can briefly walk you through what we do in this tutorial. However, there are many more tutorials I made on, on AI in the past and on this channel. So you can check this playlist that I have where you can watch all of the other videos where many of the things still apply to this specific model. The link to the slides as well as the playlist is in the video description. So make sure to check it out and follow so you can kind of have all the links and everything that you need for this tutorial. So the plan for this tutorial is in the first step to do a quick stability matrix setup. These days, I basically always recommend using stability matrix to run ConfUI or other stable diffusion web UIs, and it's no different for this one. So we will use stability matrix to quickly then set up a ConfUI. So if you already have stability matrix or you have your own ConfUI installation, you can just skip ahead and go to the next part, which is downloading the Z image or Z image turbo models. Then we will set up Z turbo or Z image turbo, and then we generate the image from the thumbnail. It shouldn't take too long and you can just follow along since everything that we use here is open source and free. So even if you're not sure if you can actually run this and if it will work and stuff like that, you can still just try and follow along and see if it works for you on your hardware. To do the very quick version of this, and I talked about this much further in my other tutorials, here is a, a very quick rundown of the requirements and setup. For stability matrix, you will need a Windows or Linux machine as well as macOS, but I will get to macOS in a moment from now. You should have at least uh, four gigabytes of VRAM, but the more the better. I tried this on a few devices and it worked very well uh, on the uh, computer that I'm working on right now, which has a 4070 Ti, a desktop PC. Then I also tried it on a 3090 desktop a GPU, as well as a 4090 and a 3080 laptop GPU, which only has eight gigabytes of VRAM. And even there, it worked reasonably well, like generating an image takes maybe 40 seconds or so, which is not great, but still at least it works. So this is kind of the range that you might want to work with. I also tested this on my Mac Mini M4 Pro, where I couldn't get it to work yet, at least in the current iteration. But this will probably change in the future as we get more workflows, more ways to use a Z image. So as of now, this didn't work on my Apple Silicon Mac yet, but maybe you can still try and follow along. And by the time you watch this video, it might actually work by now. Okay. The first step is to install Stability Matrix. So you can either just search for Stability Matrix in your search engine of preference, or you can just click this link if you also have these slides open. So in my case, I'm just going to go to download and then I will just put it on my desktop and download it here. One thing that is important or helpful to know is that you shouldn't put this on a cloud storage. That will not work basically. And you have to make sure, since now it's downloaded, I can show to you uh, that you unzip it, right? So on Windows, that is uh, basically here you can click on extract all and then you just extract everything to your desktop or on macOS you just install it as you would install any other macOS app. So now we have this new folder which is stability matrix win and x64. So we can basically just uh, uninstall the zip archive just to make sure that we don't open the wrong one and then we can go to the folder and just double click on stability matrix. So usually on Windows this will give you this warning which uh, says that Windows protected your PC. You have to do this at your own risk but I've been using stability matrix forever so you can just click on more information and run anyway and then it will just start. So here make sure that this is set to portable mode that will basically put all the data that it needs to run stability matrix inside of one folder. If you want to get rid of stability matrix at any point later you can just delete the folder you don't have to uninstall anything through your system. So always make sure to use portable mode. Then you can click on continue and we don't have to share our analytics. The next step is very important though. If you have an Nvidia GPU you should use ConfUI the regular one. If you have an AMD GPU and as I went through all the GPUs earlier, I don't have one here, so I never tried this, but uh, there is this ZLuda version where you can probably use or utilize your AMD GPU much better with. In my case, I am going to select ConfUI. Now we have this recommended models and we can completely skip this for the moment. So we can just click on close uh, because we will download our own models in a moment from now. What this does is it installs ConfUI in the background now and we can just have this running. So we can just close this. And if we want to check the current state of installation or downloading, we can just click here and then open it like this again. But 
but for the moment we will just have this running in the background because it will take a few minutes. We can use the opportunity though to already download the models that we will need. If I go to the next slide, we have the model downloads. We need three specific models. Here is a Z Image Turbo a BF16, which you can download from the official ConfUI org a repository. Then you will have to search for this download button. It might be hidden or somewhere else, but this is what you want. Now what we have to do is to put it into the correct folder. For that, we have to briefly understand the folder structure of Stability Matrix. So in this case, I have the installation here, so I will just open this. Then we have the data folder, and inside of the data folder, we have models. So sounds correct, right? Then when we go to models, we have to go to diffusion models when we download this spe specific model. So we go to diffusion models, and then we just save it. If you have set up uh, your browser that it automatically downloads it to the download folder, that's no problem. You just have to make sure to later move it to that particular folder in order for ConfUI and Stability Matrix to recognize it. The first thing is downloading. So now we can go to the second model. This is Quen 3 4 billion parameters. So for that, again, we can just click on here and it's the official repository. And then we can click on download again, as you can see here. And that one goes into not the diffusion models folder, but into the text encoders folder. So that's very much to the end, the third last folder in this case. So I'll just double click on that. And now we are in the text encoders folder and there I put this model in. Now that one is downloading as well. And we can go to the third model. That one you might actually already have, even if you're relatively new to ConfUI or Stable Diffusion or AI image generation. That is the VAE. In this case, Z image or Z image is actually using the Flux VAE. If you already know what that means, I, I don't have to explain it further. If you don't know what that means, you probably don't have it yet. So in that case, just download it. Otherwise, if you already have something, and now we have to go to the correct folder again. If you have something in the VAE here, that is VAE, uh, you might already have this model. So again, here you can see it is a flux one. This will take a while. As you can see down here, it uh, takes a moment and this is about almost 20 gigabytes. In this case, I already prepared this so we can move along a bit quicker, but generally speaking, you would just have this downloading and then you have it in the end. This is how it will look once ConfUI is installed on your device as well. In the sidebar, we have these different menus. I have many tutorials where I explain which menu does what and how to use them. But in our case, we only have to go to the packages menu. So in packages, now we should see ConfUI. In this case, I can just click on launch and it should run ConfUI in a few minutes from now. And then we can open it inside of the browser. So you know that it is running once you see this line to see GUI, go to, and then this URL. There are many ways to open this. Either you can click this button, you can click on the link, you can just type in the URL. In my case, I'm just going to open it. Since I tried this before, this is already running the correct workflow. However, if you don't see this yet, it is probably looking something like this. There's a few things to take care of in the beginning. It might be that because of a new update, you will see something called the Node 2 system, which is this thing. If I turn this on, everything looks a bit different. There's one major difference, which is that in the case sampler, we don't have the control after generation anymore for the for the seed, which is something I want to keep. So if you see this, or if it looks like this, uh, maybe just go up here and check that you turn it off. For this tutorial, I will just turn it off. In the future, I might make tutorials about how to use the new Node system. But for the moment, let's keep it like that. What we can do now is go back to the slides. And after downloading all the models, the next slide will be the Z image turbo workflow. There's two ways to do this. Either you can just drag and drop this image into the workflow space or into ConfUI. In my case, I'm just going to download the JSON file. And then I can go to ConfUI and just drag and drop it in here. This is the entire workflow. And I will run through this very, very quickly because I explained this in many other videos before. And you can check those because it doesn't really change that much. I will just show you where which model shows up and how to select the correct model. So for one, here is a lot of information again that you can uh, go back to. Here are also the download links if you have to do this later on and you still have the workflow file. So you can always go back to that. Then we basically have three models because we just downloaded three models that we have to load. So the first one is up here, which is the load diffusion model. That one is basically Z image. So in this case, we can check and then I can select Z image, but it should already be correct. The second one is the load clip model. That is the Quen model. In this case, again, it should be correct, but you can click on it again and then select it again. What is quite interesting, and I ran a bunch of tests, is that the type doesn't really matter. I'm not sure why that is the case, um, but in the reference that I used from ConfUI Org, they used a Lumina 2, but doesn't really matter. The device should be set to default because that will basically use your graphics card if it's available. Then lastly, we have the load VAE. And again, this one, you can also rename it to make sure that you uh, know what it is. So it's the Flux VAE. 
AE, but otherwise you just have this file AE.save tensors. These are the three models we downloaded. So now we can move to the next part. For one, this one we can kind of skip over. I also did some testing how the model sampling aura flow works and how the shift impacts the image generation. But honestly, and I tried this with the same seed, it didn't make any difference in the image generation. So I just turned it off for now. But since the official conf UI org used it, I just kept it in in case for future versions this might might have an impact or not. Then we have the prompt. So this is basically the same as we had before in any other workflow. You basically have a positive prompt which describes what you want to see and then you have the negative prompt where you describe what you don't want to see. This is already the prompt for the thumbnail image. This is how we generated that. Or we are in this case Hey.ai which is an AI art collective which I will also link in the video description. We can still do image to image generation with the current version we have of Z Image Turbo. There are a few things to consider. So for one, back in the day with Stable Diffusion XL, the image to image workflow had actually quite a big impact on the image generation. In a Turbo workflow, it's a little bit different because we only go through very few steps of denoising. I'm not going to explain this in much depth. I will talk about it a little bit later. The point is that the reference image in our case doesn't have that much of an impact, but I will still explain why this particular image does have some impact in the way that we see the final output. Then here we have the upscale image, which basically downscales it, although it says upscale, but we can set the resolution here of our output image. So in my case, I wanted to generate the thumbnail for this video, so I set it to basically full HD, which will be quite slow, relatively speaking, depending on your hardware. So I cannot recommend this for everyone. In that case, you might want to go to something smaller like 1024 by 1024 pixels. So this would be the base resolution uh, also of that image, basically. The image here, by the way, if you want to actually generate the exact same thing that we have in the thumbnail, is also valuable through this slide. So you can just go in here and it's a public domain image. So it's free to use for educational purposes, for example, as we do here. That is basically the setup here. However, you don't have to use an image to image workflow. And that is something, as I mentioned before, with Stable Diffusion X it had much more of an impact, I believe, or the way at least in this specific kind of prompt and workflow. However, you can also just always go back to the latent image, which is basically just random noise. So you can also connect this. These are the two options that are included in the workflow. Then we can go to the case sampler, which is important in some few points that I will very quickly go through. In this case, I have the seed to 71 because that was the seed I used or we used when generating the thumbnail and it's set to fix. Usually you don't want to have it at fixed because fixed will just generate the exact same image every time. However, since you should be able to generate the image from the thumbnail, uh, this should be fixed. So you can actually do that and it doesn't change automatically. So I set it to fix here, but usually you would want to set this to randomize, which we can do already now. Then we have the steps. I tried a few steps or a few different versions of the steps in my testing of the Z image or Z image. I would say that anything in the range of five to 15 steps works reasonably well. Anything beyond that will actually degrade the image quite a lot. The original workflow set 9 as the starting point and I think 9 is a very good base level. So you might want to go to like 10, 11, 12 if you want to, if you want to try or push it. But I think 9 is actually very nice and very good. So CFG should stay at 1 because that is the classifier free guidance scale and usually this can control how much or how strictly the prompt is interpreted. But with the turbo model we basically want to keep that at 1 all of the time. So not just with this but with most turbo models. Then I also checked and tested a bunch of sampler and scheduler options and they don't have much of an impact. So some schedulers just don't work like exponential which just looks strange most of the time I believe. But most of them work reasonably well and they don't make much of a difference, qualitative difference uh, in far as I have tested it. So I would just recommend staying with Euler or Euler and simple. So that is probably the best performance quality ratio. Then lastly we have the denoise which is only relevant in that case for our image to image workflow. 0.75 just means that we take 75 5% random noise and 25% from our input image. So as soon as you connect the empty latent image from here, you will want to set this to 1 so it uses 100% of random noise. But for the case that I had for the thumbnail, we just want to have it like so. I'm going to run this just to demonstrate how this works. The first run will usually take quite a while because it has to load like all three models, the clip model, um, the regular diffusion model and the VAE. The first run might take something like a minute or so, but after that it will will speed up quite a bit. It should at least. So now we can see it's running and in this resolution for me it actually on the 47 TTI takes like 40 seconds to generate an image. However that is mostly due to the high resolution. In this case with full HD basically it just takes quite a long time. It's done now though and now I can actually
actually talk through this uh, second version because now uh, it's much faster since I'm using a lower resolution. So with 1024 by 1024 pixels, it is basically just 20 seconds now. And that is probably mostly because I'm recording at the same time. So this can be much faster anyway. What we can do as well, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate it, is that I just use the lay empty latent. What the main difference will be in my experience is that if you look at this image, it is very quite flat. The prompt also prompts it to look quite flat, which is the purpose of it. But if I don't use my reference image, it will have quite some more contrast and it will separate the background from the subject quite a bit more than it would do otherwise. So if I want to flatten kind of the look, I use this image to have some kind of very uniform starting noise of these bright colors. However, if I want to separate the subject from the background uh, more, I would use something like this. So now you can see the background is still quite bright, but the foreground is a bit more contrasted. However, there is one very interesting specific thing that is relevant, I think, for this model, which is that it can work with text very quite well. So I'll just do an example that is not supposed to look very good, but just to illustrate the point. We have the prompt in enigmatic figure and then so on and so forth. And I want to change it to an enigmatic figure holding up a poster with hand drawn text saying tutorial. When we do this now, it should be able to render the text pretty decently. Of course, it always depends a little bit on the seat and everything and uh, what it can write. But uh, generally speaking, the Z image model is very good at producing text like consistent text. So this took a bit longer again, just because of recording in the background. But generally speaking, the text is correct, even the hands. And that's something else that we have seen with previous models, the hands are very consistent. There are limitations to this, it cannot render words that are not not in the dictionary or that are not often represented in the data set super well, but it is still quite impressive. And here now we would kind of have to kind of tweak the description of the uh, font, for example, to make it look nicer, but I think you get the point. So that brings me to some of the limitations and the use cases for this model. What is quite apparent is that it is very good at photorealistic content. And that's also what it is fine tuned towards to basically as a distilled model. That means that with more creative subject matters, it can under form sometimes quite a bit. So it will anthropomorphize things quite easily and it will look like very human and very like photographic and photorealistic in many cases. This is basically the main advantage of this model. You can make very, let's say, realistic looking images, but for more creative use cases, it can be lacking at times. That's something to, to keep in mind. Besides that, I think it will be very interesting to see how this further develops. So right now we only have the distilled model, which as of now, already people started training Lauras for it and kind of customizing it further. So that's very interesting. And we expect there to be the base model coming out soon as well, which will have some very interesting features. And I think that's something worth keep looking at. Some limitations are still that this will not work on very low end devices. So there are still use cases for Stable Diffusion 1.5 and Stable Diffusion XL. And I made a lot of tutorials about it. But I think for this specific kind of photorealistic look, it is very quite capable for the uh, relative performance that it offers. So it is still pretty quite fast, but very realistic in that sense. I think the aesthetics are very close to something like Stable Diffusion 3.5 medium for the prompts that I use. However, this is actually quite a bit faster in my experience. So that's very interesting. So that's something to stay tuned for. I probably make more videos about this model, especially as the base model comes out. And I will also review the research that they do around it a little bit further so that I can present you some more details and tests with this. I hope you got something out of this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one.